Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over section 6.2. In this section, we're going to be solving linear equations in one variable and uh, solving proportions. So, uh, we're going to definitely solve linear equations. Uh, we're going to have some proportions as well, and uh, look at a few of those problems. So, we won't be doing the fifth objective. So a linear equation in one variable is an equation that can be written in the form ax plus b equals zero, where a and b are real numbers and a is not equal to zero. This is a very formal statement, um, but mainly we just have a linear equation. The linear uh, linear means that we could just have one variable and uh, the variables to the first power, um, and that equation just means that we have an equal sign. So solving an equation for x uh, involves determining all values of x that result in a true statement when substituted into the equation. Such solutions, such values are called solutions. So the big thing, the nice thing about this statement here is that we'll be able to check our answer by plugging it back in and seeing if we get a true equation. Um, so uh, the addition property of equality and the multiplication of property of equality basically say if we have uh, an equation like a equals b and we add the same number or subtract the same number to both sides, it's still equivalent. And the same thing with multiplication and division. If we have an equation like a equals b and uh, we multiply or divide both sides by uh, a number c, then they're still equivalent. So this is a better example of what we were just talking about. Let's say we have an equation where we have a variable minus a number. In order to solve that, we want to add. Like so in this case, we have x minus 3. So in this case, uh, to solve this, we want to add 3 to both sides. And the reason we're adding 3 is to, uh, the, the idea is we want to isolate for the variable. So we want to get the variable by itself. So since we have minus 3 on the same side as the variable, we're going to do the opposite operation and add 3. So that will cancel the minus 3. And when we add 3 to both sides, we'll get x equals 11. So if you check, 11 minus 3 does equal 8. Um, if we have a variable plus a number, then we could, subtr then we could subtract that number from both sides. That will cancel the subtracting 7 will cancel the plus 7 and we'll get x. Negative 15 minus 7 is negative 22. So if we double check, negative 22 plus 7, that does equal negative 15. If we have a variable times a number or a number times a variable like this, then we can divide both sides by that number. So if we have 6x equals 30, then we can divide both sides by 6 and that will cancel the times 6. So that we'll just get x and isolate x. 30 divided by 6 is 5. So 6 times 5 is 30, that checks. And then the last one, if we have a variable divided by a number, we can multiply both sides by that number. So multiply both sides by 5 uh, on this one, and that will cancel the divide by 5, so that we'll just get x isolated. And 5 times 9 is 45. And to double check, 45 divided by 5 is 9. So general steps in solving a linear equation, this is, just the, this is just the basics of like whenever we have a minus, we add, whenever we have a plus, we subtract, whenever we have a times, we divide, and whenever we have a divide, we, we multiply. But the general steps are to solve a linear equation, we want to simplify the expression on both sides first by combining like terms and getting rid of parentheses and stuff like that. Then um, um, we do the same thing on the other side, we collect all variable terms on the other side, so th both of these are simplify both sides. Then we isolate the variable and solve. Isolating the variable would involve these steps, you know, doing the opposite uh, operation than the operation we see. And then we check the proposed solution in the original equation, so we just plug back in. So here's one, we have two times the quantity x minus four minus five x equals negative five. So the first thing is, is to simplify. So we want to distribute the 2 into the x minus 4 so that we get 2x times 2 minus 4, which is minus 8. We still have minus 5x equals negative 5. So then we want to um, combine like terms. 2x and minus 5x is negative 3x. Um, then we have uh, negative 3x minus 8 equals negative 5. The next step would be to add 8 to both sides. So this time, at this point, we're trying to isolate the variable. Um, so we add 8 to both sides, and negative 5 plus 8 is 3. The eight, Adding the 8 here gets rid of the minus 8, so we have negative 3x equals 3. And then we isolate the variable by dividing by, um, we should be dividing by negative 3. Oops. 
it should it should be showing divide by negative three here, and uh, then we want to simplify. So let me fix that in the lecture here. Let me fix that. Okay, we got that fixed. So since it's negative three times x, we divide by the same number, negative three, and negative uh, three divided by negative three is negative one. So let's double check to see that negative one works for this equation. So if we plug in negative one, we'll have to do the parentheses first. We have a negative one here and a negative one here. So negative one minus four is negative five. Two times negative five is negative 10. Five times negative one is negative five. And when you do a negative 10 minus negative five, uh, when we minus a negative, that's like adding the positive. So it's really negative 10 plus positive 5, which is negative 5, and that equals negative 5. So that's a good solution. Uh, then let's look at a proportion. So a proportion is a problem uh, where we have two fractions equal to each other. And I'm going to move out of the uh, full slide and show you this problem from my math lab. So let's say we have uh, this proportion where... A proportion is where you have two fractions equal to each other, and we need to solve for the unknown, x. So it's x, uh, x over 15 equals 4 over 3. You might remember from previous math courses, but the way to solve a proportion, is uh, we use the term we cross multiply. So we're going to take x times 3, and that's equal to 15 times 4. That's the way we solve proportions, is cross multiply. We do the upper left times the lower right, and say that's equal to the lower left times the upper right. Just cross multiply and say they're equal. So this is going to give us, if we cross multiply, 3x, that's the upper left times the lower right, equals 4 times 15, which is 60. 4 times 15 is 60. Then, since um, um, we have 3x equals 60, we want to divide both sides by 60. So x should equal um, 60 divided by 3, which is equal to 20. <clears throat> so we can double check, let's plug that in, 20, and that's good. So that's how you solve proportions as you cross multiply. If we look at this one here, we're going to cross multiply negative 7 times 28. So negative 7 times 28 is going to be 176. Let me double check that. Excuse me, 196. So we're going to get a negative 196. Negative 7 times 28 is negative 196, equal to 4 times p, the other, the other cross multiplication, equal to 4 times p. In order to solve this, we want to divide both sides by 4. So p will be equal to negative 196 divided by 4. And that should equal, P, should equal negative 48. Let me double check that. Negative 48. Let me double check my math here. Negative 196 divided by 4. Excuse me. My mental math didn't work very well that time. It's 49. And there we go. So my mistake was just thinking that 196 divided by 4 was 48. It's 49. So there's our answer. Just remember for equations, you want to simplify and then isolate the variable using really mainly these steps here. Where's my PowerPoint? Where we show this is the main how to isolate the variable. And then... Uh, Sometimes you'll have to simplify before you actually isolate the variable, like this equation. And then lastly, we solve proportions by cross-multiplying. So good luck. We'll see you next time.